right, what's up guys? It should come to no surprise that I have not been very impressed with the Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl games, like at all. I never played Generation 4 until this summer, so I am like 15 years behind on those games. I did however play Platinum this summer and was very surprised how much I enjoyed it. And it also made me really, really dislike the remakes even further. And I wanted to make a video where I pretty much just show five ways that I think would have helped this game significantly. But just as a whole, really, really would have made me enjoy these games as a remake a whole lot more. So with that out of the way, let's go into my five ways I think Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl would have been better if these were implemented. So, the first thing I mention is something that I feel more towards now that I play Platinum. Not getting Giratina episode and the Distortion World in an HD game was honestly devastating. I didn't feel that way as I was playing Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, but after playing Platinum, experienced that part, not getting the chance to revisit that, or even a story more fleshed out to implement it, I feel it's such a, it's a missed opportunity of something that could have been great. Like I thought that world was grand and really cool. Even 15 years ago, that world still looks great. And I would very much have wanted a modern take of that. So it's a real shame. I really think Flesh Out the Endgame would have made this game a lot stronger as a whole. Now for my number four spot, it's something that it did bother me throughout the game. And that's more so to do with the thing they're implemented and the thing they decided not to implement. For example, Expo Share is in the game, however, one other modern implementation that would be, you know, Ease of Life, whatever you call it, is Technical Records and TMs. Technical Records has always been reusable from Sword and Shields, I get that, and they were easily accessible due to raid battles. TMs, however, were always reusable and have been that since Generation 5, and I feel it's very archaic to go back to that very structure Consider these games are now, what, 15 years old? That means that most new players you are in their 20s have not experienced this part unless they actively sought out to play the older games. And I don't believe that way is implemented really well. The game in itself has a cap on money, which means you cannot over or get over 100 million cities, which also means that it's hard to grind money to restock on TMs in a way the Sword and Shield implemented it. So, I don't know why they actively decided to go against that. I I can see it as a, you know, a challenge in itself, but I really consider that it was been such a long part of the game. I don't see the reason why they went back on it for this game, but still kept certain elements, such as, of course, Expo Share in the game. It makes no sense to me. So, an issue with going fully faithful, in theory, is that what I liked about the previous remakes were that they were implementing functions for their main generation. For example, Auras had Mega Pokemons and Mega Pokemons were implemented into the story, the gym battles were different due to the Mega Pokemons themselves, and just a lot of more Megas to actually use. In Let's Go, they were implementing Mega Pokemons and the alternative form from Generation 7, solidifying that Let's Go was a part of Generation well, 7 with actually a lowland form so i this is of course kind of a hot take but i wouldn't very much be mind that dynamax was being a part of brilliant diamond and shining pearl for the very reason mega pokemon were introduced in auras while i don't believe the mechanics itself is all that healthy i'm <laughs> Go on record, I don't really like Dynamaxon. What I do like, however, is the store implementation of those very functions. For example, how nice would it have been if our four generation four starters had exclusive Dynamax form and the gym battles were not the same with exclusive Dynamax forms? I would very much for GMAX, right? I would very much like that a lot. And I even would have loved to expand the story. Um, for example, in Auras, it was explained how Rayquaza and Deoxys, who had a, a key implementation of why Mega Pokemon existed in the first place, and Eternatus might have done something with whatever, Giratina, Palkia, and Osseus, I don't care, to just implement something grander. I, it would have been a great way of expanding a lore that wasn't really expanded upon in the previous games. They did try it. 
but they could have done a lot more with it and Generation 4's remake would have been a great chance of doing just so. Not to you know, reinvent the remake itself, but actually giving the remake some substance as wasn't there before. It really aged the game quite a lot by actually not having the key functions of its generational game in that very game. So I feel that's a great shame. It's not my biggest issue, but that's one thing I feel they missed out upon because I think that would have made this game a lot more interesting as a whole. So number two and number one are kind of intertwined with one another, but it's more because of the hypocrisy that it follows due to these very changes. And that is in the first trailer of Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, if I'm able to, I'm gonna show it in this video. Hopefully, I get it. If so, hey, look at this. But, but it's such a tease. Lopani uses return in one of these contests. And I just, it's, like I said, it's a, such a tease, really. Because I was thinking, due to them, of course, showing Lopani using return and saying it's a faithful remake, I was thinking, all right, they go into reintroduced, hidden power and pursuits. And hidden power got confirmed. It's in the game. For unknown. Fuck. It, it, it's really it's such a menacing thing to do. And of course, Pursuit is nowhere to be found. Which all of a sudden, Nasty Plot is now a setup move that is in the game. Though it wasn't in the game before. You know, Faithful and all. Um, so Psychics are, well, stronger than ever. Like Sam has never been this good. And consider, of course, you know, the hidden abilities and the buffs beyond. I mean, Breloom is awesome. For Alligator is incredible. Incredible. There are a lot of like, changes in the meta, but at the same time, I feel if you're going to be faithful, either go all the way or not at all, which is why my number one is Pokemon Home should have been treated very differently than it was. The thing I feel is the pre-existing changes from Generation 8 have not been capitalized on in BDSP or Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Look, the, the large point for me, and why I think Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl becomes so forgettable, and also the reason why it's not the main game for VGC tournaments whatsoever, is that the changes made for Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl are not solidified with Generation 8 as a whole. It's a side game, much like Legends of Asius. They didn't treat it like a remake of the main series at all. So, for example, and I really can stress this enough, Pokemon Let's Go, like I said, had a smaller Pokedex, but Mega Pokemon were introduced to it, and alternative forms, like the Lowland forms, were introduced to that very game. It made it sure that that game was a part of Generation 7. I would very much wanted them to treat the Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl with the same amount of respect, because I think if Home was introduced with not Mega Pokemon, I don't care about that really, but using pre-existing moves that had been introduced Generation uh, 8, such as Body Press, Nasty Plot, you know, diverse, diversify their move pools from their Home accessibility to Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. More so, when I know that Body Press is learned by Nosepass, I know there are a lot of other mods that really much, a lot, would have loved to have that option. It would have made the game or the meta in itself in Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl a lot more diverse. And talking about diversity, I have no idea why none of the alternative Galarian or Alolan forms made it into this very game. Because one thing that was incredible with Sword and Shield, you know, consider the limited roster and then that thing, like what follows? People were pissed. They really were. <laughs> it was kind of bad. Uh, <laughs> but one thing that actually stood out once Home came out, besides Legendary has been introduced, which of course was accessible through Home, at least a Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl, but another thing was that pre-existing Pokemon already released could capitalize and use their Alolan forms into this game. And I thought it was a golden opportunity to ensure that Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl was gonna be a part of Generation 8's roster by re-implemented through Home the Alolan forms and the Galarian forms into this game. Just think about it. Having obstacle not viable for the game, having um, the, the Galarian birds, um, Alolan Sand Slash actually having a reason to use hail at all in this game, and um, you know, hell, Galarian Jajimbo I was gonna say, but uh, we sing. There, there were so many golden opportunities here to do something about it, to solidify this game as a great one. 
there was a golden chance of actually, like I said, solidified as a part of Generation 8, but also solidified as a remake. I think they treated this game extremely poorly, having Legend of Zelda released so close to it, but also for many people here, this is their first introduction to Pokemon. And I remember Generation 4 being a big deal because of the DS. And I feel they mistreated this remake as just another game. And for me, there was no reason to. I remember Auras being incredible diverse due to the changes made, and Harkos Soul Silver just the same. Um, let's go, maybe not that much, but still, <laughs> I, for me, it's just beyond me how you would treat this remake so poorly when there are a golden opportunity of doing something great here. I think it's an absolute shame. Consider this would have, with these changes in mind, become from an average game to one of the remakes ever made, because the implementations of diversity in this game already exist. They just didn't use it, and for me, not implemented the alternative form to revive the meta is probably one of the worst ones, and also probably the reason they decided not to capitalize on it for VGC, because they had no plans of making this game as diverse as Sword and Shield. So with that, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video, and um, make sure to, of course, tell me what you guys think were changes in Real Diamond Shining Pro you would have want to maybe make this game better than it became. So that's it, guys, always. Thank you for watching, and have a great day. Take care, everyone. Bye.